Aha, we are recording, perfect. All right, welcome everybody to today's Parker Office Hours. It is already May 15th. Um, we are meeting at seven, no, 1700 or 5 p.m. UTC. Um, and we have a lovely agenda today. Before we get to that, we want to remind you that we are following the code of conduct by CNCF, even though we aren't a CNCF project, we, we really like the CNCF code of conduct. So we are following that, so be excellent to each other. And with that out of the way, we have some Parker updates, some Parker agent updates, and then we have an exciting update to the Parker demo instance CICD deployment, uh, which I'm really looking forward to hearing more about. Um, and as always, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Um, also, we will have a Q&A section at the end of the of the agenda where you can just ask anything, really. Um, all right, I guess it's actually <laughs> my turn right away. Um, so I think we have a couple of interesting new things in Parka. Um, one started out as a hackathon project, and I kind of like in quotes finished it's not yet merged but we're looking for feedback and we potentially soon are going to merge this um and as you can see it is still looking similar let's use this one but as you can see up here we now next to the bigger um next to the filter for profiles where you can like filter by labels etc we now have have this like filter fi uh, by function name um maybe you've uh, seen this before where it was like close to uh the close to the flame graph so this one here that actually moved from down here to up there and the reason why that is is because filter by function name also works for the metrics now um at least uh once you have that version available so we are running parka and parka is profiling itself it should work with like every other um, profile type as well, um, also coming from Parker Agent, for example. And if we click into something, we can see the um, the stack traces. And now what we can do is we can say, OK, we are only interested in uh, ingester.ingest, for example. Hold shift to select or like have this tooltip uh, stay at the same position. And we can click the function name, copy that, um, and paste it up here. Click on search. And now what we're seeing is only whatever that specific ingest um, stack was part of, or like a function with that name was part of. And it also only shows that um, amount of, of uh, yeah, in this case, heap memory usage for that particular function or a all the stacks that match that function. Um, nothing too different to what we've seen before, given it was like the biggest one. Um, maybe looking at this. And then looking at, for example, um, yeah, this one over here, you can copy that one and you can see the, the metrics graph looks quite different. In this case, it seems to be super constant, so it doesn't even show an increase or anything. But we can see that over time, it is kind of staying the same now, which is nice. Um, and the same is also true for CPU samples, for example. So that is closer to what the Parker agent has um, as as data. And we can we can see that, again, we can look at, for example, now uh, copying this function, we can look at all the stack traces over time um, that were associated with kind of like running garbage collection. So we can only see in, in the graph now um, the, the values, um, yeah, like, for for this case, like the um, values per second. So like we had like six values over three seconds. So that's like 0 0.02 uh, values um, per second, basically. Um, but yeah, like that that works. And I think the the super nice feature about this is that now what we can do in the future with uh, Parker is also look for um function names that are way further down in the stack and only look at them for example so looking at like runtime dot grow slice for example we might want to like see where can we pre-allocate slices um we can we can put that into the search function and now we can see 
how we're like growing slices over time up here. And now we can only see all the stack traces and function calls that, that eventually grow a slice. So that is super helpful, I think. Like for example, here we could see, okay, value.append bytes. <laughs> I guess it is in the name, but like that would be a, a good candidate to, to improve, for example. Um, but we can like over time find find good candidates to to improve like pre-allocating byte slices. Um, yeah, I think that that really is that. So it is kind of a, a variation on on what we had before with the filter by function right at the flame graph, but now we kind of moved it up here because it also filters the metrics graph. Um, it is not yet merged. We are probably going to merge it in the next couple of days. We need to do some final tests, etc., and then and then we will have that available. Um, questions. Okay, I guess there are no questions. Then um, I want to hand off to Yomi. Do you want to share your screen or should we just continue with me sharing the screen? Uh, I can share my screen, just a quick right. one. <laughs> yes, hey everyone. Um, so just a little update from the front end team about what we've done. Um, so in the past, like we had the theme mode in Packard where you could like, you know, select if you wanted the light or the dark mode. But recently, um, we shipped a PR, which actually allows you to sort of choose um, if you want your the Packard theme mode to be chosen from the from your system settings. So, for example, if on your computer you like you set on your preferences to have a dark mode throughout the, like your usage, the Packard will now actually respect that. So, if I quickly share my screen. Um, Just one sec. Yeah, okay. If I... So, uh, can everyone see Parker? Yep. Nice. Um, so basically, yeah, just I have um, Parker running locally. Um, the default theme mode is light mode. And in the past, you know, you used to like, you click on this and it changes the dark mode um, immediately. But then there's now a drop down which now has the addition of the system settings, which as you can see, I'm on the dark mode on my computer. So if I do this, it changes it to the, um, to the dark mode because that's what I chose as my own personal preference. And the really cool thing about this is if I open system settings, yeah, uh, I'm gonna hide this. The open system settings is also quite um, reactive in the sense that if you change this, it also automatically changes it. So pretty much that's that's what we um, did. I Although I should mention that I'm in between the time when this was merged and now I've been looking at other websites and I've, all, I've actually seen that uh, they actually do this thing where they automatically prioritize your system settings like if they have a system settings mode you prioritize the system settings um, mode and actually don't even let you choose if you want a light or a dark mode so i was wondering if that's something you think we could also do here because right now you still have to manually you know switch to the system settings so i was wondering what what you get um what um your thoughts um you know if does it make sense to automatically set it based on the system settings or we should actually you know allow them to choose the System settings first. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to hear thoughts on that. I personally like it like this. Like it, I choose light or dark mode depending on the applications. But I also have my system setting on light mode. So yeah, I like Makes it sense. this way. Makes sense. I definitely do like the automatic thing where it switches depending on on the day of time uh, time of the day <laughs> that way around um and like that was like one of the biggest like reasons why I I also like wanted to have that feature right like 
Um, I always had to like manually switch, um, but my the rest of my system like automatically switched. Um, I don't know. I, I I personally feel like the system one should be the default, but then you could override. But that that is like my opinion, I guess. Not have like the light theme be the default or the dark theme be the default, but actually have the system be the default. Yeah, I I personally prefer that, but. Yes, take. this this I this I agree with. The system should be should be the, the default. Okay. 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 Yeah, I will send a follow up here for that then. Um, to yeah, it's nice that there's the option to you know if you don't want the system system can always default back to the light to dark one too. Yeah, I think yeah. I think especially for testing like <laughs> for us developers like that's a necessity yeah. as well, right? Like without changing the entire system. But I think just having it on the system by default makes makes kind of sense, and then we choose whatever the the system tells us to to use. Yep. yep. Nice. Thanks. Thanks everyone for the feedback. Really cool. Yeah. Looking forward to not being blinded by <laughs> Parker in the evening anymore or whatever. Um, all right. Thanks, Yomi. Uh, next up is Javier on some Parker agent updates. Hello. So on the Parker agent team side of things, uh, we have some progress to report on uh, JIT unwinding. So right now we either unwind the stacks of native processes using frame pointers for the entirety of, of the stack, or we use uh, our custom dwarf unwinding system. But we don't have anything that mixes both modes. So Sumera has been working for a little while on um, supporting JITs that have frame pointers enabled, which is the idea that will allow us to unwind a bunch of frames using frame pointers. And whenever um, the JIT section stops or ends, then we'll start using dwarf unwinding. And this is progressing very well. We're close to having a pull request ready. Um, right now, there's only like one or two like small edge cases to sort out, and um, we also have like a fine grain metrics on how the unwinder is performing. So right now, we need to change that a little bit because uh, once we start doing this, we sort of take a leap of faith whenever we are in a section that seems to be jitted. Um, it might have frame pointers, so it might not have. So we need to change the way we account um, the errors, right? Because um, it is possible that unwinding fails, but it's not because our algorithm is wrong or the unwinding information is wrong, but just because um, these initial frame pointers in the JIT section are present. Um, then we've also been working on Java support. Um, Vaishali has been working on these, and uh, there is some uh, Coreto proof of concept uh, working locally, and she's working on shipping this. Uh, for those of you who don't, know what Coreto is. Uh, Coreto is, I think, a JVM distribution by um, Amazon that is supposed to be a bit more efficient. And I think it's the one that um, they ship by default. And uh, besides that, Kamal and I have been working on a lot of, um, sorry, and more people as well. Uh, we've been working on performance and reliability improvements. Um, the big part of this work has been um, something that Kamal has been doing to reduce risk conditions and reduce memory usage. But uh, this is something that started with a PR for the process information. But it needs a bit more work. Uh, we have found that there are some edge cases there. And also, we need to be more careful with um, the resources that we're using. So we're trying to optimize that. And besides that, we also landed um, integration tests for um, the profiles themselves. So we run the profiler. And we ensure that both the metadata and the profiles, like the whole stack trace for different processes is the one we expect. This is still a little bit flaky, so we haven't enabled it by default in production, I mean, in CI, but um, can be run, I believe, with a make test slash um, profiler. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Hopefully in two weeks, we'll be able to show the JIT unwinder, maybe the Java unwinder as well, and who knows, maybe more things. Any questions? Seems like there are none. 
um but yeah really great progress and i think the performance and reliability improvements are <laughs> always super nice looking forward to the jit stuff obviously awesome um yeah i think um now i'm super excited to hear more about all the work that uh, max has been doing on on the ci cd side of things for parka demo uh do you do you wanna tell us uh there has been so much work it's incredible <laughs> all right everybody uh, yes uh that's a bit of time last week so this is like a problem we was was kind of recurring on working with solving like months ago uh, so we had a question coming often in Discord on GitHub. Like, uh, when was last time we did a re release to the demo environment? Did you test that PR in the demo environment? Uh, things like that. So uh, I'm going to share my screen actually. So like a few months ago, we already talked about that. I think we've talked about it before, but a few months ago we decided to release the to release the the manifest for the demo environment. But we were just putting flat in in a repository, and nobody touched them. Um, that, that so the first thing I did is I restructured them. Now they are all, all every component is isolated in its own directory, so we can manage them separately, including Parker. And one of the first things to get continuous deployment working was to be able to update the image that we wanted to deploy to uh, to the to the environment. So for that, I use Flux. So not the entire Flux CD, CD, Flux can do everything, but we use only the image automation, which will simply, every time we push an image to the GitHub uh, container registry, Flux will watch that registry, it will pick up the latest image, and it will update the, the Packer manifest. So it makes commits uh, like these ones. Here we can see, it, it does, a, it does a, I think it does that those updates every minute. So it might take up to a minute to get the release from a little, the latest image uh, to the repository. So that's what the commits look like. And coupled to that, I did Argo CD. This one will do applying all those manifests. Um, so you can see that here. So we have a link here. I'll let some nice little badges. Um, so Argo City is serving right here. Actually, just going to... Yes. So that's Argo City. It's serving. It, we see all. We find again all our components in our demo, in our demo environment, and it's going to be watching any difference between what we have in the Git repository and the cluster. This one, for example, is out of sync, and we can see with the diff. You can see simply pointing to another branch, I haven't merged the PR that adds Argo CD itself. And auto sync on PACA is still disabled. So for now, the automation is still disabled because I wanted to do the transition before enabling everything, enabling everything. And so Argo CD provides on top of that, it's a very, very nice UI. Uh, so I'm logged in with my GitHub account. So any maintainers from the PACA, uh, from PACA can can simply log in to, to that and do anything on the cluster, synchronize, edit some manifests. You can do on the fly, you can just change some things like that. Just click edit and it can change things in the manifest. That's the an editor. Um, and if I go for the Parker, that's now public. I'm gonna log out so you can see what's public. Parker. And if we change or look for the pods, Uh, I think it's something nice as well. Yeah, good notes. You can see on, on notes, I think. Yeah. Uh, so if you click on the pods, you can see the logs. So now the logs are public. We can see some failures. So I guess anybody who's looking at what a diploma is doing, seeing some errors in their environment, they can check are we seeing the same errors on, on our side? Is it something we are maybe aware of? Yeah, here we see that symbolizer. I think last time it was the one I was looking for. Maybe that changed. Well, that's actually the agent I'm looking at. I was thinking of looking at Parker itself. That symbolizer, I remember seeing some errors. Well, apparently it's just restarting. Yeah, uh, back off. Can we see previous here? Uh, 
previews. So, yeah, it's panicking. So we can say that we have a panic right now in the portion of the world. There's um, Argosy will show us the health status as well. Like we can see, it's like rolling out Argosy again because it's just restarting her program. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's mostly it. Uh, we also have Renovate now. This that structure allows, allows Renovate to find the application. So it's aware of the ham shot we may be using, the JSON libraries, or the customized pieces. And Renovate can update anything. We also a few images that it finds. Like for example, we got just the API update for the latest Prometheus image. Uh, so we can get that. We are very up to date right now on everything. So I heard a little message. Is that a question? Yeah, the UI is very nice. Uh, any any questions? I think yeah, Clover thing. There's also like a little launch pad here. You can launch the URL to the to the UI, so like Rafana. I think also Grafana upgraded the plugin so they work again or cannot work. I think the queries are wrong. Where if one may not saying anything. Actually the UI change, I'm not aware. That's a new UI. <laughs> I'm not familiar with this one. Where is the dashboard? Yeah, I think they don't they don't the panels were completely crashing before, but now they just don't get any any data. The query must be wrong. It's just that. Yeah, I mean, that could could be. <laughs> voilà. Any any questions? I do have one question. So um, right now we synchronize um, always the latest image into the cluster, right? Yeah. Did I understand that right? Okay, cool. So I I do I I do like that, um, but. Something that would be super nice, and Matthias mentioned this um, earlier today as well, um, would be if we could have kind of two setups, like one that's like, I think Matthias suggested dev.parka.dev. Um, dev. <laughs> um, that would be like the tip of all um, deployments, right? Yeah. Um, and then the demo.parka.dev would be the latest stable versions. Right, with, like the, the actual releases. So we would have, you would still use the same namespace with like two, um, the same cluster, the two namespaces. Yeah, we could do, we could do that. I, I mean, I don't feel strongly we could do two different namespaces. I, I don't really care how we structure it. It was just be, I think it'd be really nice if we have one where we're like, this is pretty reliable. Um, and this other thing where it's like, this is under heavy development, it's almost always broken. But it definitely yeah. runs latest. Yeah, I can do two. Yeah, two on two like environments in the same cluster. That's that's it. Yeah, the structure I've done actually is actually I've done the structure I've done is something I've used before, and it's like designed to handle dozens of clusters and hundreds of applications. We definitely won't get any there. Any there. It's kind of a showcase, but yeah, definitely I can add in a simple other environment. It's like super easy. Just basically duplicate that directory, and there's what in that. I don't think it's very big. Yeah, it's just those few lines to be duplicate uh, and change what image we, we put in from here. Yeah, so that should be very Super cool. I love it. Yeah, again, like fantastic work. I mean, been following it along and like previewing it here and there. It's 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 been it's been super cool to see you to uh, contribute all of this and and it's definitely worth having for sure. Um, I I wanted to follow up, but you already like um, kind of touched on that. Like, how do we update Parka or Parka agents to like the latest main version or whatever? We don't even need to do that, which is <laughs> all automatic. So that's that's really really cool to hear. Um, and and then yeah, I think as I said in one of the PRs, it's 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 really fantastic. And and I don't think I have ever reviewed a single PR that has a Helm chart, JSON code, and a customized template all within one PR. So that was, that was really fun of a co contribution as well. <laughs> yeah, I really try to reuse what the community is using. I don't want to rehab on the wheel. I may not be, for personally, I don't like Helm, 
but the community likes it and they build a lot of things with it. I don't want to just rewrite it in JSON it because I prefer JSON it. So I just reuse that. Yeah, um, no, that's super reasonable. I think we we agree with that. I've tried to document as much as I could in every single directory how I, where you can find the configuration, like the documentation for the configuration of the of the upstream library, or you the few things I think that are good to worth noting, like the Agosi like if you want to configure your environment, how you do it. Like because you have two flags to pass, you have to pass the the root, and you have to say if you want to use SSO, so for GitHub. And there's things that they did manually, like all the secrets. We don't really have secrets management, so I kind of just put them in the cluster manually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure it's necessary. Was that a question? Ah oh, no, I, I just agreed with what you were right. saying. <laughs> yeah. So yes, kind of. Like if you want to suspend the automation, it's documented somewhere. Like you have to suspend all those things, you just basically delay the field to enable the thing, get it back just to resynchronize. Uh, Flux is the same thing. Flux, you can suspend either by per image repository or you can suspend the entire automation for the whole repository, the Git repository. Yeah, on how we created the, this is key again for the secrets. Okay, yeah, nice. I mean, that's super, super uh, good to have. Um, that's for sure. I I don't see right now the need to do to do any of that, but you never know, and yep. you don't have too high of of an SLA for um, for any of this. It's just the demo environment, right? So yeah, if it's like broken for half a day and we can look at it together, like that, that's also fine. So yeah, that's super nice that you documented it regardless. Thank you. Something I think about if we need a second parka, we'll need a new node, a new large node in the cluster. Right. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Because right. I also changed the, the rollout policy to be replaced because I did resource request on limits to everything to make sure things don't boom all over the place and they just get the memory they need. Uh, and parka is now replaced, it's not rollout. So you don't want to wait, but the new one is healthy, it's just replaced. To be able to get this 10 gigabyte program immediately um, right yeah we don't need two nodes mm -hmm. yeah no i think that makes sense yeah awesome like i think you so you what, what's next for this i think you wanted to have a, a review on the pull request that you opened for argo right yeah and you then, can otherwise um, i can merge it i don't know there's nothing very definitive in it like when yeah. it and then you can enable it and it will start like synchronizing yeah. automatically, right? Exactly. Okay, nice. Yeah. And then if we can follow up with what, what Frederick said, like if we can have like the stable and latest kind of uh, environments, that would be fantastic. And then I think I have another idea <laughs> on what to add maybe as an exercise. Um, I can try that myself, but we want to kind of like also put the metrics into the cluster itself um to not have the uh, metrics on the on the pura demo but have it like con contained within that um single cluster and environment because we are right now like all the metrics are remote right sent to um to the pura prometheus class uh, prometheus instance mm -hmm. as just mixing up demo demos of uh, completely separate projects right um and and then we can also have like native histograms for example enabled and stuff so that would be fantastic but maybe that's an exercise for me but if i can't find the time i'll reach out <laughs> oh you can you can help and, and review and stuff yeah. yeah but i could you create an issue for what you requested like the dev, the dev on the, the the stable release yeah uh, like yeah. especially i want to see like what you really want them to be available at so i'll make sure I get that right. Yeah, I think that's reasonable for sure. Yeah, we can do that. Nice. Yeah, I was super excited have... to seeing this today. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. I actually have kind of a meta question. <laughs> it's not really related to Parka. It's actually more related to the tooling. Um, so uh, for context, like at Polar Signals, the way we roll out things is that we, on every pull request, we template everything, or not template, but like we run our JSONnet code, generate everything out, and then run a kubectl diff uh, to see what would be applied by the pull request. 
um, and then we comment that back onto the um, onto the pull request for people to review essentially. Um, yeah. And uh, the diff takes about I don't know forty seconds or something to uh, to run. And if you know me, you know that I'm very obsessed with fast CI. And this one step taking forty seconds is kind of a you know thorn in my eye. So I'm I'm curious how uh, what your experience is with like Argo CD in terms of how how quickly the diff gets generated. I've never done it to the PR. Uh, well, I, I did look into that for now. Like for all of that setup, currently I'm doing it manually because I, I like to review the diff as well. Makes um, sense. There was, I remember, someone who wrote like a GitHub application that was doing that, but it's not my thing, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I don't know about the speed. I don't wonder if server side maybe it's faster. When I do it locally, it's not 40 seconds. I mean, it depends. Like if you are deploying Kube Prometheus, maybe 40 seconds, very large. But if you're deploying Parker, it's probably just 10 seconds. Yeah, that's probably true. And um, this is a diff of our entire infrastructure. Oh, entire. Oh, yeah. that's something I'm doing also. I didn't say, but I did CI to that. Uh, am I still sharing my screen? Yes. Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah you are. Uh, so I did CI on a thing that's cool. Uh, I did it to filter the paths. And right now, for example, we did an update on Prometheus. So that updates monitoring. And we get only monitoring being built. Uh, so we see customize any customize all customize was skipped skip skip the uh, skip uh, and skip uh, and helm as well and just it was built just for monitoring. But if we go on master, uh, I think we can we uh, go on, yeah this one actually this put your request modifies this uh, modifies the the CI. Because so it changes simply the schemas that are available to it, and so it builds everything here. And it doesn't take that long because it just it just validates the scheme, the, the manifesto actually do the diff. But yeah, uh, I don't remember. I did something before I was using git diff between two branches. I'm trying to filter off that, but here I still use the skip duplicate, and I do some JQ on it. Uh, I'm really fan of JQ. Uh, just filters it. And, Build another JSON of what should be built later, and then I use that input in the matrix. Neat. So yeah, that's how I do. If you your your diff your, your CI is taking too long for your mono repo for your infrastructure, just try to do find the directories that are actually just needed to your entries again in your CI. Yeah, something I did a lot at my previous job. We had very large infrastructure with like a thousand applications in the same repository. And every few months, I will find an optimization to reduce it by 30% on speed. I think in the beginning, oh, we had just 10 applications, was taking 30 minutes for, for taking, well, maybe, I don't know. We had a few applications, was taking minutes. Then I, we optimized for taking seconds. Then we stopped, we didn't optimize for a while, was taking a few minutes again. We optimized with a few seconds. Yeah, just keep finding new things to do that later. Yeah, makes sense. Cool. Yeah, again, thank you for that contribution. I think that will be handy for like finding things quickly in Parka, especially with the automatic rollouts. We don't even need to think about it for, for like the demo or tip environment. Super nice. Yeah. Any, no, did any... That. Did come from that was funny somewhere else. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Okay. Any other questions? That's funny. <laughs> no more questions. All right. Um, well, then, I don't think we have anything on the agenda. Any more generic questions overall? Anything profiling, ARCA, et cetera, that people wanted to ask? Any burning questions you have running Parka? Any problems you're running into? I have a long list. 
yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess that's that's true as not a user. All right. If there are no more questions, then that's also great. Um, we will see everybody, potentially not everybody, but we are back in two weeks at 9 a.m. UTC. So um, that's why I say probably not everybody on this call, but we will be back and we will share some more new updates on Parka uh, and, and all the related projects and, and things are happening there. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and then I think, yes, go ahead. No, just mistake. <laughs> <laughs> OK, <laughs> Try, trying the emoji reactions, right? Yeah, I, I did that one earlier as well. Raise the hand instead of the emoji. Um, all right, yeah, and then uh, see you in two weeks. And feel free to follow us on, on Twitter and on, on YouTube, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you can stay in the loop. OK, thanks, everybody. Take care. Have a thanks great everyone. local time, evening, afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.